yeah so first things first i want to mention um most of you won't care because the stuff that's only kind of really interests me and clearly because this is a podcast i'm going to start talking about the things that i'm interested in um burger 19th birthday is happening right it's going to be coming up very very soon it's happening in december and i'm pretty sure it's december the 9th i'm going to be double checking my listings here and there's a lot of conversation online that i've seen via the Bergheim community subreddit and a few other places and stuff such as the telegram which they've got a really tele- a really good telegram group actually if you search for it i think it's just called like berlin members or something i forgot what it's called but there's a few of them on telegram if you're not on telegram definitely jump on there there's a really good few communities on there and i think it's great because the people there give a shit and the mods take care of the little community so there's a people that are coming and spam and do random stuff on there and post some very disturbing pictures and get the fucking you know the group nuked but usually they do a really good job of kind of keeping everything streamlined there's actually a really good one i forgot the name of it is that it's only open or only allows you to post publicly on there from like friday to sunday or friday to monday which is obviously the days that burger is open and there's some others are open all the time but they're pretty good but regardless anyway there's a lot of conversation online that i've seen um b- about this 19th birthday for burger and it's coming very very soon around people being very worried very very worried and perturbed about the flipping queue system right because if any of you guys have been there or if you haven't been there burger is obviously one of the most famous clubs in the world and obviously when it's a special celebration like a 19th birthday the the, the demand to get in there is crazier than it usually is and the queues are insane like the last one i went to which was a Sylvester, um, which happened when, which is, uh, I'm going to say that might have been, I think it was a, basically a Sylvester's like their kind of New Year's Eve, New Year's Day thing. But I think they missed out on it on the year that I went because of COVID. So they kind of did it the following, um, you know, middle of, they did it in the middle of the month, basically middle of the year, around June or something like that. And I went to go to one, right? And that was the first time I've been to a, a special event at Bergheim for a long time and I forgot what it was like and obviously I got myself kind of you know um caught in the queue that was like four plus hours and that's the longest I've ever had to wait in that place and it helped that I wasn't really looking at my phone I was just kind of you know I had some random playlist playing on my phone I wasn't really checking the time too much I was just kind of perusing around the environment talking to some randoms in the queue so I wasn't that aware of the time I think if I was aware of the time I probably would have left but I don't think I would have anyway because naturally that queue as well isn't you know i've not been in crazy long ones but i've been in ones that you have to wait for a while and the problem with that queue is that you're usually quite near the front or you can see the door because there's no you know there's nothing kind of blocking your path unless you're like queuing around the corner you can always see where the end of the queue is or you can always see at the front of the queue sorry so you always have this slight hope that you're going to be near it so i was queuing it for four hours and obviously i ended up getting in which was obviously great but it's not something i want to repeat but one thing that happens quite often during special events one thing that happens quite often during special events is that people like to queue cut and i'm not too sure about you guys but i'm not a very violent person i'm not a very angry person i think i'm quite even killed for the most part but one thing that will make me fly off the handle and go crazy and kick a baby down the street or punch a woman in the face or throw a, a handicapped person off their fucking wheelchair is if they cut if they cut the queue if they cut the queue in front of me i don't care if you're disabled if you're a child if you're a woman i'm gonna put my hands on you i'm gonna get very angry i'm gonna get very violent i'm gonna get very shouty and i'm gonna do some things that i'll probably then you know land me in prison in some regard i just cannot stand it and i don't know what it is about me with cues it's my little trigger I don't know if it was because of the years of being a sneakerhead and being into Supreme and being into Bape where I had to queue outside of stores. And, you know, I'm not sure about you guys, but when I was younger and I was going to all these stores to queue up, there was like a little group of guys who were like a bit older than us. At the time, we thought they were like 50 or something, but they were probably only in their late 20s. But they were older than us and they had more connections to the store. Like they knew the people inside of, uh, that worked there, sorry. They obviously spent more money than us, so they got preferential treatment. But they would always come in like big time us at the queue. So we'll be queuing outside of these stores, out of these shops for like, you know, sometimes two days. We'll be going to McDonald's to get fucking breakfast for each other, doing the breakfast runs. We'll be fucking shivering in the cold in fucking tents and sleeping bags overnight, staying up the whole night, not sleeping, all this nonsense, only to have all these older dudes, these older quote unquote cooler guys rock up in the morning and just jump the queue, right? It used to always fucking drive me crazy. And I think that kind of PTSD from that queue days of queuing up for sneakers and hype streetwear stuff has now carried over and now in my adult life when i'm going to clubs and stuff the last thing i want is for some cat head right some fucking ghb bunny 
right some fucking cat monster some coke fiend some mdma fucking wally to jump in front of me while i've been waiting patiently outside in the fucking cold for fucking four plus hours and it's going to be even worse this what i'm going to on the 9th of december usually the months of you know the months between like well, let's say september all the way until february are usually the coldest months in berlin right or in germany i guess overall it's bitterly cold probably even more so here in, in london the cold actually cuts to your bones and usually if it's colder um you don't get a lot of tourists so the crowd will probably be a lot be a lot better than it usually is for a kind of celebration thing because usually celebrations happen in the summer usually in the summer a lot of tourists go there a lot of the people from you know out of town or whatnot go there too there's a lot of like pent up like oh my god this is the best party ever type of thing a lot of like project x type of vibes and, you know too much expectation too much entitlement too much just too much and it ends up not being a good night most likely this will be a really good party that's a really you know bittersweet thing about this all the hype that people are having around it is justified because the lineup isn't too bait it's not full of like you know all the fucking bait people that you see on tiktok and twitter and shit it's a kind of heads lineup it's kind of different rooms different type of vibes so it's gonna definitely you know all four rooms actually fucking open right from burger and panorama bar um hail to saw all fucking open so it's definitely gonna be a barnstormer but keep your head on the swivel because people are going to be cutting the queue on this evening more than you've ever seen in your life so what i advise for you if it's going to be your first time going there i advise for you my advice for you personally would be this the people at the front the bouncers they're not really looking what's going on in the queue they're keeping an eye on who's in at the front of them in their line of sight but they're not really paying too much mind what's happening at the back so they're not going to help you you have to help yourself and your other ravers around you the people in front and behind you most of them don't really care what's going on behind or in front of they don't, they don't care what's going on behind or in front of them they just want to make sure they get in so they're all keeping quiet they're all trying to pretend they're not high they're all trying to clench their jaws to make sure it's not swinging they're making sure their eyes are not dilated you know people aren't diluted dilated properly too, too much whatever so you have to look after yourself and what i say about looking after yourself is this don't allow anyone to cut in front of you if that means you have to get into a shouting match with somebody do it the bouncers aren't going to care and if they do come over and ask you hey what's going on why are you guys shouting you can calmly explain to them that this mongoloid tried to cut in front of you in the queue you should honestly 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 say that you should never let anybody anybody cut in front of you in any way shape or form personally for me i feel like that kind of a front is too much i can't take it especially if you've been like i'm a patient person i never i'm never gonna ask somebody hey can i go in front of you i'm, I'm going there on my own volition i'm queuing up because i want to go to the club so i'm already embarrassing myself as a man as a human being by leaving a warm home by leaving my warm country my life's life to travel how many distance i am how many hours to go stand in front of a dumb nightclub right it's already it's already redacted right it's already redacted it's already super super redacted that i'm doing this in the first place don't then now make the situation far worse by jumping in front of the queue and acting as if my presence doesn't fucking matter no that's not cool let's all be friends here if you came in late you stand at the back you stand behind me just kind of obey the laws of the queue but you should never ever let anybody cut in front of you and i've seen so many things happen i've, I've legitimately had shouting matches with people in the queue like screaming at each other and it's been quite embarrassing when you scream at each other about the queue thing you tell the person to go fuck off at the back and then you see them inside you know it's a bit awkward don't get me wrong but i'm not letting anybody jump in front of me in the queue i'm just not gonna allow it i just cannot allow it there's something in my body in my physiology that just doesn't allow it bro i just can't do it so i guarantee so for you if you're new or if you're gonna go or if you're not new and you've been before i would say if you can't get into a shouting match with somebody and tell them to go fuck off to the back of the queue the least you could do is a little silent war i've done this once before if somebody jumps in front of you just silently walk in front of them most likely if you do that the person that you both walked in front of is going to say something now they can be oh what's going on and you can calmly turn around and say this person walked in front of me so i'm walking in front of them then turn back around and let the person walk in front of you have an argument with the person that was behind that was in front of them that's a kind of a little it's a little bit of a you know it's a bit 4d chessy that move but it, it can work sometimes or you can just do what I do sometimes where I just I just I just adopt the big black bouncer mode and I just start swinging from side to side like dark side feel right on the x y on the x y axis i just start swinging from side to side i start fucking you know punch punching the palm of my hand on the inside you know acting like as if i'm 
<laughs> as if I'm like a bit twisted, you know? There's something wrong with me, as if I'm going to snap any moment, right? That black man rage. I just start doing that and then sometimes that can intimidate the atmosphere around you and make people think you're a bit scary. That can work sometimes too. But whatever tactics you can do to make it, you know, to get it over and done with, do so. Because the last thing you want you see, waiting all this time in Bergheim, right? Imagine you're waiting outside to get inside this fucking exclusive club you want to get into. It's hard to get in there. Entry's fucking... Oh, yeah, big up um, Fashion Roadman. Just seeing you. Well, Guanji. Big up the chat as well, everybody in here. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you. Make sure you smash the like button down below. That'd be greatly appreciated if you're enjoying the stream. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Just imagine you're kind of standing outside, right? You're standing in a queue. You're doing your thing. And, you, and imagine you don't get in. It's worse if someone jumps in front of you because they're going to make you wait outside longer and you're still not going to get in. So I would prefer it to speed up the process. So I'm going to say to you, hey, don't jump in front of me. I want to I want to find out quickly if I'm going to get in or not, but I don't want you to add to my time outside. That's another rationale for standing up for yourself. But I do recommend people do because I've got a feeling this coming up fucking Bergheim is going to be really, really really crazy with a queue people are going to be going nuts so i want people to be prepared for it i want people to be aware of what's going to happen i also want to give you some advice in terms of standing up for yourself and i also want to say for the most part even if you're scared oh if i stand up for myself the bouncers are going to see they're going to chuck me out trust me they're not watching they're not watching they're not paying attention there's too much things going on in that club for them to be paying attention to every little microaggression or little cutting thing that's going on it's not really their responsibility it's really ours to be fair they shouldn't be going up and down the line policing people we should be already grown up enough to kind of respect the queue you know but we shouldn't be jumping in front of people but i guarantee you if you see me in that queue and someone jumps in front of me it's going to be a war i'm going to be going ufc on that person i swear to god it's going to get crazy but I'm hoping it doesn't because I just want to go and party. I want to see who I want to see because like I said before, the lineup is fucking crazy. I actually prefer the fucking panel room lineup to the main room. I think the panel lineup is fucking bonkers, but the queue situation is going to be nuts and I pray for everybody that's going. I pray for every single person that's going.